Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Ali Show, and today we have a very special guest, professional MMA fighter, John Bruin. How are you, John? Yeah, I'm good, bro. Good, good to see you, man. Yeah. Um, you're currently sitting at a record of six and one. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah. Awesome. Um. Anyway, before we get into it, uh, how are you, John? Yeah, good, man. Like, I never felt better with uh, with everything personally and professionally um, as right now. So. It's crazy right now. I feel great. I'm ready to fight in mm -hmm. a couple of weeks. So yeah, you're getting pretty close to the yeah. uh, the fight date, eh? Yeah, yeah. Exciting. Two weeks away, is it? Yeah, two weeks. Two weeks from today. So I I did my spider today. You know, s similar kind of time to when mm -hmm. I would normally fight. So where is the uh, fight taking place? So the fight is gonna be in the kingdom of Bahrain. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, the guy who started this promotion is. Uh, part of the royal family of mm. the kingdom of Bahrain. So, um, Sheikh Khalid. So he's uh, the son of the king and he uh, he loves MMA, bro. He loves Yeah, he, he loves seems sport. to be like quite a big fan Man, himself. boxing, everything. He, he'll he jump in the ring, you know. He, he's he got he's got a gym. He funds the national amateur team. Wow. He's got, a, you know, a professional fight team of fighters and coaches and everything like that. Oh. And then he has a promotion where he unleashes all these guys, you know, and 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 puts yeah. all his coaching and all his investment to the test, kind of thing. And so he's got his little stable, and he's got this show that travels all over the world. And I guess his guys and and all the other rest of the the best fighters that he can find and sign to the promotion, he um he pits them up against each other, right? Eh? So oh, that's it's pretty, really cool. Yeah, for those who don't know mm. um, what John's talking about, so you're referring to Brave CF, which mm. is um, initially, I didn't I didn't know what that CF stood for. Neither but it's did I. Yeah. Combat Federation. Yes. I was thinking it was Championship Fighting. I was like, oh no. That's I, what I thought also. Yeah. yeah the then, Combat Federation. And then I looked I looked mm. it up again. I was like, better not butcher. You know, better yeah, get yeah. it right. So I was like, it's Combat Federation. It's pretty cool. And I've actually heard of um, like Bray from quite a way mm. uh, a wee while back. You know, and like uh, it seems to be the fastest growing. Um, MMA kind of event yeah. uh, that's from the Middle East. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I think not only in the Middle East, um, I think it's it's spreading, you know. It's spreading it's, global it's, now. Yeah, 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 it is. And like, obviously, you know, they have a bit more funding and, mm. you know, you would imagine, you know, that they have enough, they have enough funds and like uh, they have good, very good networks mm. and stuff like that. And um, they're getting fighters from all around the world. Yeah, everywhere, man. Like they, they, that's their whole vision. The vision of um, Sheikh Khalid and uh, the president, um, the Hawk Shahid, is to take MMA and make it a truly global sport. Wow. All right. So from from their perspective, the UFC kind of really dominates the uh, Western market, and um, they have a a way that they promote themselves. Um, and and from my understanding, they kind of use the WWE model. Okay, mm. so if you follow MMA media and, you know, you listen to maybe guys like Ariel Hawani and stuff like that, mm. they always talk about, like, it's the WWE um, in MMA. And, like, that's a bit of a problem because the WWE model is all about controlling who's a superstar. Yeah, And that's yeah. where the UFC gets criticized. Oh, you're trying to build this guy, you're trying to build mm. this guy. Um, so that's their model. And then in the East, you kind of have one championship. Um, that yeah. kind of dominates kind of like the Eastern market in terms of Asia. Mm. Um, it's and, a big one. is a oh, huge market, oh, man. It's, it's a mogul. insane. Yeah, man. Like the amount, it's crazy because for us, yeah, we're, we're part of the Western world at the end of the mm. day, you know. Um, even though we're geographically closer to Asia. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're a Western country, you know. Mm. So, But um, in that part of the world, they have a whole nother model. Like the pay-per-view model is not how they make their money. They make their money based on the fact that everybody tunes in yeah. to watch these fighters and everything. So the amount of eyes that gets that uh, one FC attracts or one championship, I should say, attracts is crazy. Like they get some serious viewers. Yeah, you know? it's huge, bro. It's, it's insane. I was money. listening to uh, them say like the, you know, they were telling the numbers and the stats the other day and I was like, man, that's crazy. But you think about it again, like, the numbers of you know in Asia, mm. it's huge in itself. You know, like there's so about, many people. Yeah, you know? you know, you talk about Thailand, Indonesia, and like you know Malaysia, whatever. It's huge, you mm. know. And they, I, it seems that because um, they run events in like 
the hot spots as well yeah which is like really smart mm. what uh one is doing you know they, yeah. they do it all like the big hot spots where they sell out tickets fast because mm. mm. most i think if i'm not wrong most of their one events will be like sold out yeah, yeah you do. don't forget to subscribe like and share this video yeah they do a good job with that because they they have just so many local stars and everything yeah. so yeah, it's kind of crazy. You kind of got those two big titans in the east and the west, mm. and uh, the vision for for the big dogs at Brave is kind of making it one big global market, and they they're doing that pretty well to an extent. You know, obviously COVID is has yeah. uh, thrown a wrench in everything for everybody, though. You know what I mean? Yeah. So there's a there's a whole other thing going on right now in every promotion and every you know for small businesses, fighters, whatever it is, everyone's being affected right now. So I mean. No one can complain. You yeah, know? it is. But you mean, mm. I mean, that's the thing. Like with what is going on and the rate that they have been mm. growing, they'll pretty much get there soon. Yeah, I mean, like they they've gone, they've gone to a definitely like a record breaking amount of countries, um, in the short time that they've been around. I think they've been around like three or four years, and they've hit like an unbelievable amount of countries. Me myself, I've fought in some crazy places for them. I think I fought four or five times. Where have I fought? You know, Romania. I'm going to Bahrain. Um, I fought in Jakarta, Indonesia. I fought in Pakistan. I fought in India for them. Wow. And I fought in the Philippines and Manila for them as well. So that's five countries right off the bat. You know yeah, what I that's, mean? That's awesome how they, mm. they change the locations as well. So even for the yeah. fighters, you get to get like new experiences. Oh, bro. bro. It's I'm here awesome. for the stamps. I'm here for the passport <laughs> stamps, but I'm not here for the money, obviously. You know what I mean? <laughs> Damn, if I was here for the money, I'd be doing something else. You know, I'm here for some free passport stamps, you know? Um, I just want to get back to that in a, in a, in a bit. But, um, oh, I was going to say uh, about what you um, you actually told me. You came from a float session um, oh, yeah, earlier. Yeah. Just before this, um, I, I, I haven't done this float thing mm. before. Could you tell us a little bit about it, bro? Yeah, okay. So, uh, man, I guess this is a little bit of a... Uh, bit of a sell on the old uh, meditation techniques and the uh and the float culture down the road in mount eden so shout out to those guys uh, yeah. <laughs> um i don't know if they're listening but um maybe maybe afterwards like i met the guy there uh today matt he was he was really cool so i had a good chat with him but uh yeah the the floating for me that was my third float in the last maybe six weeks mm. the first two i did like kind of back to back and then uh, that third one, I kind of wanted to like take a little bit of time and you know use it more wisely. They're not cheap, you know what I mean. Mm. So, um, but it, it, I think they're worth it, you know, um, especially for someone who's uh, going through something and you're really trying to trying to get to the bottom of something, whether it's emotionally or professionally or whatever it is. Man, I met some cool people down there, and the guys there are nice. So, like, man, there's not many. It's very it's, chilled. Yeah, super chilled, bro. And I'm not. You know, I'm not trying to be no hippie or anything like yeah. that. You know, I got, <laughs> yeah, I breathe and I meditate, but I I don't have time for that. You know, I'm not gonna mm. sell you on on a new diet or anything. I don't even mm. want to mention the diet. You know what I mean? Because I don't want them coming after me. <laughs> um, <laughs> so it's kind of like that, you know. But mm. anytime you mention things like that, people get it twisted a little bit, you mm. know. Um, but I'm big into meditation. I'm big into kind of like Stoic philosophy, a little bit of Buddhist philosophy, Taoism. Mm. Uh, that kind of stuff just blows my mind, you know. Mm. When and like, how did you get about into getting into meditation and yeah. all this stuff? That's a good question because like, I knew, you know, when I started fighting seriously a couple of years ago and, and, you know, decided to, you know, fight professionally. When I started fighting professionally, I said, this is how I'm going to make the money. This is my breadwinner now, you know. So I went all in. And um, that's when I started looking for things like, okay, well, what what can I do that's different from everybody else? So that's how I kind of stumbled across meditation. You know, I, I listen to podcasts and stuff and somebody tell me, oh, man, you know, the benefits of meditation, all this kind of thing. And uh, you know what I would do is I would just listen to what that person say, uh, pretend to meditate. And then I'd go and meet someone and they'd be like, oh, do you meditate? And I'd say, yes, yep, that's great. <laughs> but I didn't actually know what I was doing and mm. I didn't know the benefits. I just retold stories that people were telling me. Mm. And basically, uh, without getting into too much detail, you know, it's obviously been a tough year um, in many ways, like uh, financially with the COVID stuff and everything. But 
uh, emotionally and things like that. You know, I went through some pretty tough times this year that made me like look at myself in a in a whole another way. And uh, one thing that really helped me um, must have been, you know, a few months back was uh, was just setting the timer and making sure I did thirty minutes of meditation. Mm. And I did that for about one week. And, uh, you know, I needed, I needed some help and some guidance from, you know, the Headspace app, you know, I'd meet people and I'd, and I'd open up a little bit and that, that helped me with some of that kind of stuff. Like give me a, an idea of where to go. And yeah, I mean, that was going all right. Cause then, it's hard sometimes oh, like, bro. you know, when, especially, you know, there's a like, little bit of a stigma be- behind when people know that you're a fighter, mm. they assume you're very rough, mm. very violent mm. or you got no problems, no issues, yeah, and like yeah. they don't understand. Like there's yeah. so much that goes in into a fighter's head as well. You yeah, know? man. And like some people can can live live that moniker and, and live up to that and and do great, like hundred mm. percent. Like I'm not saying that that like my way is a, is is going to benefit everybody. Definitely. Some people are true savages, mm. and they got the savage mindset from the moment they wake up to the moment they go to sleep. Mm. And training is just an extension of that. But like for me personally. I actually, I was kind of like that, mm. or I tried to be like that, but I wasn't happy like that at all, you know. Yeah. And once it's, I figured out meditation and you know just like how stressed I was, how much like pain I was in for no reason, physical pain, mental pain, emotional pain, whatever you want to call it, I didn't even know that that existed. Like I was just walking around like thinking that the more I suffered as a fighter, the more sacrifices I made, the better I would be. I didn't re I wasn't like weighing it up. I wasn't doing a proper equation like I sacrifice this for this. And when I get this, I don't need to sacrifice that anymore. I wasn't doing it consciously. I just had this mentality like, you know, deal with it. Deal with as much adversity as you can and that's how you become the strongest version of yourself. I didn't realize that you actually don't need to try that hard. And the re- the crazy thing about meditation is like the metaphor is this how can you sit down and do nothing for 30 minutes and then for the rest of your day you're more productive that doesn't make no sense yeah, right it it, it and when you, you think about it like that doesn't make any sense yeah. <laughs> how could i just let's say i wake up at 6 a.m. every day and i start my day and i go off to work mm. straight away straight into it just go in the current of life and everything like that or i wake up at 6 a.m. I put the timer on, I do 30 minutes of meditation, I commit to it. And then at 6.30, I'm behind in my day 30 minutes. Somehow I'm, I achieve more that day. I don't know how that works, mm. but you know, apparently there are studies. Now I haven't read the studies, but there's studies that tell you how it works. You know, And yeah, I'm not gonna bother reading it because I feel it. It's way, way too yeah. deep, way too long. Yeah, too no, many no. <laughs> to get into it. You know it. what, I'll let, like, I'll let the guys, uh, you know? Yeah, let those, the experts deal yeah, with I'm that. I'm a fighter, side. I fight, and yeah. those scientists, I let them do the <laughs> yeah, science, you know them. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, so. Man, but you, man. you're seeing the benefits <clears throat> already, which is awesome, which is, you know, you. Bro, in the last three months, I, you know, I don't know what it is, I just, since I committed to that and, and everything, yeah, it's it's made a big change in my life, hey, you know? Like, I, I challenge anybody, if you, if you I, I don't say 30 minutes, I, I if you set the timer for 10 minutes a day, morning, night, whatever, pick a time, and you do that for 30 days straight, don't come to me and say, oh, you know, I wasn't feeling it. How many days? Oh, day seven. Oh, go away, bro. Get out of yeah. my face, you know what I mean? Keep <laughs> come, going, yeah. Do keep 30 going. days in a row, mm. And then I like I honestly I, I challenge you. Mm. If you come to me after doing thirty days with your hand on your heart and you say I don't feel any benefits, I mean, it's free, so I don't even have to give you your money back. Just stop yeah. doing it and just keep going on. And you can call me a liar. Yeah. There's, all there, there's no me, loss you know? there, but yeah, you know, no loss, at least bro. you give it a try. Yeah, but, man. Yeah, that's been that's been a lot, bro. That's been mm. the, I think that's the you we we used to live in a. Uh, a kind of speed that's just too fast you know you just like what you said you know yeah. you wake up and you get straight into it you keep going boom mm. boom all day mm. finish your day go back sleep and mm. like you know you don't really there's no like no briefing and debriefing no no and that's what like you know you, you kind of bring yesterday's problems yeah. into the next day you never solve them bro and it just you got the, how many people got the same problems 
you know when you okay there's a few things i know about um one of them i um listen i got a dietitian you know mm. because i need it yeah because uh, the weight cut is rough you know what i it mean is. that's life but it is um you know i feel like i could give a few a few people a, a good tip on on uh you know cleaning up their diet i got a few recipes for you you mm. know what i mean i got a couple breakfast bowls that if you switch it up you know um you could do it but it's like unless you're like willing to go for it you know mm. what i mean you just never go, yeah it's it's crazy it's different, it eh? it's different mm. it's just different man. you've yeah. got to get into it give it a go mm. commit to that you know that program yeah the make sure yeah it's gonna mm. be consistent because mm. like that's the other problem people not patient i feel yeah. like you know i mean i mean i've been there before myself like sometimes yeah. you you don't you know but you learn mm. you've got to be patient and you've got to stick Bro, through because it because like I mean, I, I was a little bit lost there for a second, but with the diet and stuff like that, how many, like when I say people have the same problems? Okay, I'm on a diet this month. Okay, I'm on a new diet this month. I'm on a new diet this month. I'm off my diet this month. Five years later, step on the scale. You're the same weight as you were five years ago. How many conversations did you have? You're wasting my time, bro. Mm. Get out of my way, bro. Don't come to me with this new diet. Come to me when you've committed to it, you've figured it out, you've felt the changes, and then you persist with them, and then you've got the knowledge, you can go and help someone else with it. But don't be coming to me like with all these same problems over and over and over and over. If you've got the same problems over and over and over, yo, you got to set the timer and, and meditate and figure out what's the real problem, you know, what's the real problem that you keep falling over. And like, I'm I'm so far from perfect, that's not even funny, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I've... I've got some things that um that still plague me to this day, you know, and that that I'll I'll be that dude, you know, and in five years I'll probably still be working through some of the same things. But some I feel like a lot of people go through a lot of unnecessary pain, you know mm. what I mean? Because they can't face the reality of the situation because they're just moving so fast, they don't ask themselves the right questions, you know. What what do you really want, you know? Do you want to be do you want to lose weight? You know, if we stay on the diet an- analogy, do you want to lose weight or do you want to ha- enjoy meals with your family? Mm-hmm. Do you want? Do you like McDonald's or do you want to lose weight? Like, don't don't come here and tell me you want to lose weight if you like eating McDonald's. Yeah. Then game over, bro. Like, you know what you want. Just stop lying to me, bro. Yeah, yeah. it just doesn't. It doesn't. <laughs> it ruthless, doesn't go together. You know? <laughs> it doesn't go together. Uh, you yeah, know? it's like man, like here, you know, we got world champions in this gym. Everyone, you know, can walk into this gym by a set of gloves walk out and tell their mom or tell their friends or their colleagues i want to be a world champion well are you doing exactly what israel does are you doing what brad are you doing what dan does are you doing what shane kai do no nah. well then you don't want to be a world champion if you don't live like those guys then you don't want what they've got mm-hmm. you you have everything you want in your life today if you want a podcast you got a podcast, bro. You do mm. it every day. You might not be Joe Rogan right now. Mm. How do you think you got to be Joe Rogan? He didn't get there sitting there being like, oh, man, I wish I was like so-and-so. No, he was like, man, this is my podcast. I'm just going to do it every day until I'm the best. That's it, eh? And that's what you're doing. You know, you just crack it out and you just keep going. And if you flop, did you want to be Joe Rogan or did you want a podcast? You got a podcast. Yeah, that's bro, it. It's over. Yeah. <laughs> Game over, bro. You know what I'm saying? Game you, over. You know what I'm saying? You're doing it. That's, Just you know, appreciate this it, you was know? the, you know, this is something really interesting. You know, people start podcasts thinking that they're going to be the next Joe Rogan. I mean, like, you, I mean, there's not, there's no harm mm. in having a vision. No, not at all, bro. You know, aim, go, aim for the stars, mm. you know, no doubt. But like, you can't do it for a month and, and then come nah. back and say that, nah. oh, you know, like, Bro. Um, yeah, you I know. got people messaging me on Instagram say I want to be a world champion. They never stepped foot in the gym. <laughs> how how do you know? I know you know you want to wear the belt. You don't want to be a world champion. You know that. How good was that Michael Jordan documentary? You know when he sat down, he was real for them. You know, hey, everyone want to be Michael Jordan, bro. You know he was saying, man, I was alone all those nights that I won championships after training. I'm alone. Uh, his life sucked. You yeah. know what I mean. You really want that life? No, you don't. If that, you wanted it, you would have it. Yeah, he, he went easy. deep into yeah, his story. Bro. That was a good doco, man. I really enjoyed yeah. that one. Yeah, it was like because I I looked at it and um and I feel for him, but I'm also kind of sitting there like, man, that's a blessing and a curse. You know what I mean? It he's is. so talented. He's so competitive. He's got this mindset that's amazing. 
But that doesn't mean he's going to have the most fun on this life. You yeah, know what sec- I mean? I mean, his, his mm. work ethic was like second to none, oh. you know. And it's so crazy. Like, you look how he was. He just... And not only was he worried about what he was doing, mm. he wanted to make sure that his team was elevated as well. Oh, man. To like- be... He pushed them to get to, you know, be as good as him. Yeah. Because he understood that it was a, you know, a team... Yeah. sport and like he pushed everybody yeah, you know and that was crazy and like he didn't accept people to give excuses exactly. and man that guy was that was brutal yeah. you know and it's like what you want to be you want to be Michael Jordan or you want to be a nice guy yeah <laughs> you want to be a world champion or you want to be a nice guy you want to be the fun guy you know what mm-hmm. I mean bro Definitely. you know his friend his people around him at those times would have told you he was no fun to be around. You know what I mean? Yeah, and but most of them said his, that yeah, as well. That, that wasn't his goal. His, his goal wasn't, oh, I'll be the funnest guy. His goal was to be the to best win these rings. The you game, know what I mean? Man, and yeah. he got it done because he was honest about it, you know? And that's that's what, uh, that's one one major lesson that, that meditation has kind of taught me, which is crazy, you know what I mean? Like, mm. That, you know, how does 30 minutes of doing nothing teach you that? I can't answer that, bro. You know it's a, it's I mean? a very tough mm. question to answer, mm. but yeah, I think you uh, you gave quite a good response there, man. I, I really like that. Response. I knew why. Well, I, 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 that's the first time I answered that one. I, you know <laughs> what I mean? And being that long, so yeah, yeah. yeah I'm, I'm, maybe I'll polish that one up a little bit in time, but nah, that's a good But hey, um, I question. wanted to ask you, John, um, how did you get about into getting into MMA? Okay. Combat sports. Or? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, roundabouts way. Like, I mean, when I was growing up, it's it's interesting because my reasons for getting into the sport, it got all twisted, you know what I mean? Like, when I look back and I kind of reflect on it, it was all twisted up, you know? So, when hmm. I was a kid, I was, like a, I was like a dog or a cat, you know? Like, a dog and a cat, when they fight, they always fight, you know? Like, chimpanzees they learn coordination like that and they enjoy it right Mm -hmm. it's part of their nature but it it actually serves a function that's how they learn how to hunt and everything like that so i think that human beings to an extent are like that and um when i was a kid man like i used to go on holiday and uh man like i I wasn't like i I wouldn't i wouldn't steal things i wouldn't like you know i tried not to lie to my parents or anything like that i mean you know I take two dollars out of my mum's purse, you know. Sorry, mum. Yeah, that, that's pretty. That's pretty normal. <laughs> yeah, I, probably, I probably stole a fair few dollars for some ice creams when I was a kid. Yeah, you know? bro, sweet yeah, and ice you know. Cream. Okay, okay. Now this is confession. Now, I, but um, no. Nah, sorry, so mum. I, I was yeah. I wasn't like a thief or nothing like mm. that. But when I went on holiday, I'd go to the campground. I find another group of kids, you know, and I and I pick a fight with them. You know what I mean? Like, and I wasn't like trying to make them feel bad or call mm. them names, I would just be like, oh, I don't know that kid. He's not my friend. I might um, get into a fight with that kid, you mm. know, and have some fun. And that's how, like, some me and my friends and stuff, we used to get into a little trouble like that. No pun intended. Mm. Guarantee you that. Um, <laughs> and so, like, yeah, we'd get into a, a little bit, a little scuffle or something like that. And for me, it was always about fun. I didn't mm. realize that, you know, it was dangerous or I didn't call it violence or anything like that. And, uh yeah, I mean, that came with me when I was playing rugby and stuff like that. When I played rugby for the first time in New Zealand, like, what, it's... That, was that kind of a, like, um, sorry to interrupt, but was it kind of a way how you you felt like you were engaging in something, interacting with other kids, mm. you know? Like, was that how you... Well, I mean, like, I could, I could definitely meet a person and not want to fight them, yeah. you know? <laughs> so, I don't know. Like, it was just kind of like, I don't know. I think that human beings, to an extent, were a little bit tribal. I don't know. Mm whether like nowadays that's a good thing or a bad thing or something we should weed out or whatever. But um, but for me, like, yeah, I would play sports and just inherently, like like rugby, was it was not physical or in confrontational enough for my liking. Like I wasn't a big guy or whatever, but like when I would play rugby, like, bro, I want to take the filthiest hit, hit ups, you know what I mean? Like I wanted people to run it straight, you know what I mean? Like I'm keen, mm-hmm. like... When they took out the shoulder charge, I was so annoyed. Like I was pissed, but I was like, "Come on, boys! Like this is the most, <laughs> that's the most lethal weapon we have. Like let's yeah. use it, you know." Yeah. Um. And so hey, you to- don't forget to subscribe, like, and share this video. For sport, for me, like it just yeah, it couldn't it couldn't couldn't fulfill kind of like the confrontation level that I was after for some reason. I don't know where that came from. 
But um, yeah, I guess like now that I'm old enough to look back at it and I've been, now I'm a professional fighter and I kind of stepped back from why I wanted to get in the sport when I was 20 years old. Mm. Man, 100% I got into the sport because I thought fighters were cool and I wanted to be cool. You know what I mean? I knew that like, yeah, I, th I wanted to be a all black because I wanted to be cool. Not because like I loved rugby. I wanted to be cool, you know, and I wanted to get paid to do something that was more fun than being an accountant. You know what I mean? Because, mm. yeah, I read an yeah. article that was uh, done up on you and they were saying that you actually were part of a, a team at your private school, which mm. was like a quite quite a good yeah, yeah. rugby team. Yeah, great team. Man, we had a great team Um, my final year at college at King's College, which is, you know, like a man, like super prestigious school here. Mm. Um, man, you say you're from King's College, you get like, ooh. Ooh. <laughs> ooh. And I'm like, ooh, you want to scrap right now? No <laughs> hey, you know what I mean? No, no shit. Like I, so when I was people at Kings, think that hey, the prestigious college. What, you, uh, what are you saying about yeah. me? Hey, say it. You know, don't yeah. say ooh. Mm. You're gonna call me a white boy. Call me a white boy. Mm. I'm gonna crack you in your mouth. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's real. And that that'll still happen. Mm. I don't want no trouble with anybody. Yeah. Walk up to me. Have a go. Call me. Call me soft. Call me like white boy. Just because hey. you're from that school, you know. Hey. That's that's it. Yeah. Put your hands up, boy. Yeah. You know, like <laughs> that's how it was for me. So yeah. when I was uh, in my final year at college, there, like I basically, you know, went. I I tore my ACL when I was in sixth form, so I couldn't mm. play for. The, I tore it in the first game of the of Ooh. the season against Tangaroa oh. College, and uh, tore my knee. Had a year off. Came back. Literally came back from my last year of school. If I wasn't playing rugby, I wouldn't have gone back. Um, and, yeah, it just kind of didn't really turn out. Like, I wasn't that gifted, you know what I mean? I just put my head down and um, and Work worked ethic, hard. And I was it, yeah. obviously super physical, you know what I mm. mean? It, to a fault if I was getting in fights and getting yellow carded and stuff. And, You're not um, afraid of getting into that. Nah, nah. Yeah, you know, you know, I, was, I was used to that, you know? Yeah. And, it's, and it's not because I come from, like, a home where like violence was normalized or nothing like that. You know what I mean? Like my family, my childhood was great, man. Like I didn't fight because I had to, I fight because it was fun. And that's still the case now, you know? Mm -hmm. So yeah, when I was at school in my last year of rugby and we're playing in the 1A comp in, in Auckland yeah. and I'm at King's College, the amount of times I pop up from a ruck and get called white boy and boom, sock the guy straight away. Ooh. Oh, it's on boys, you yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> and then, uh, and it felt so good. Mm -hmm. To stick up for myself and stuff, and then yeah, afterwards the boys are saying like, "Damn, Bruin, you know, crack that guy, that big prop. Look at you, bro, you know." And I'm like, "Oh yeah, boys, I'm the man, you know." What I mean? <laughs> and so I'm like, "Oh okay, well if I'm the man doing this, and I can't make, uh, I can't like, I'm never going to be an All Black. I just knew it. Um, then I might just try do this, and then very quickly I figured out what it takes to be a good fighter, just to be cool." that's not a good deal. Mm. Be cool another way, you know? Make a lot of money, buy sneakers, and you'll be cool. But don't do this. Don't take shots to the head and train your ass off 24-7 and diet and make weight and everything like that just to be cool. Like, that's gone now. It's got to, you got to do it for the love now. And so I started off fighting because I just loved it and did it for free on holiday, you know, like a, it was a holiday for me, going and having like a little fight, you know, talking about it with my friends afterwards, you know, um, exciting, everything, you know, risky, every, all that stuff that kids love. And then it became about impressing people. And then really I realized that I was never going to impress nobody mm -hmm. and I and I don't care at the end of the day. And now it's just about having fun. Eh? Mm -hmm. so, you do it for yourself, eh? Man, I do it for myself and, and the, the real beauty of this place here at city kickboxing is that that's what we're all here for now like i look around in the gym and uh i don't know what it's like at other gyms you know but i mean i've been i was over in asia for a little bit um but here man the boys on the mat we're working jobs or we got no jobs and we're just here for the love you know what i mean like no but there's no judgment in this place you know what i mean when i meet people and or someone want to talk to me about, oh man, how do you feel? What, what do you say to people when you got a job? When they ask you what you do for it? But I don't care, I'll tell people I'm unemployed. I am unemployed. You know what I mean? Mm. I haven't fought for a year. As far as I'm concerned, I'm unemployed. So what do you want to say about it? You know what mm. I mean? Okay. It's just I'm being trash. straight. I'm trash, yeah. bro. You know? It's just being I'm, straight. That's what it is. Yeah. Like, you know. And that's I think like society doesn't mm. want to hear, doesn't want to hear that. No. But no. you know, obviously 
we've come to a different stage mm. where we don't really care what society ah, thinks, bro. you know. And yeah, this is yeah. what so many people struggle with. They're so worried about what mm. society thinks and what society says about them. But at the end of the day, they don't pay your bills, man. Man, it's like, what do you think about yourself? Yeah. You know what, I mean? what, what do you really think about yourself? Like, if you look at the people um, that you love, um, what do you really think about how you treat them? What do you really think about... Um, how you provide for them, you know, what do you, you know, do you, do you really think, like for me, uh, like I got, I got a couple of really important people in my life. One of them is my mom, you know, the easiest example for everyone is their mom, right? Everyone wants to make their mom proud and happy. Um, man, my mom's, my mom had me when she was 40 years old. I'm 26. My mom's 66 or 60. She's actually, she's 67. She's turning 68 on December the 5th. Bro, that's the back nine, you know what I mean? Like the only the only thing about COVID is my mom. I don't think I don't think nothing about COVID unless my mom, you know what I mean? And so when I think about people that are important to me, if I use that example, what does she want from me? You know what I mean? What does she really want from me? She doesn't want me to make a million dollars. She couldn't care less. She wants me to meet her for coffee on my way to training. And I try to do that on the days where I got time, you know, or she wants me to pay in, pay a little visit and, uh, you know, maybe I get a parcel sent to her house or something like that. Man, she wants me to stop and have a cup of tea. She doesn't want me to rush away. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's just about carving those little things out. When you realize how little you have to do to make the people in your life happy, and that's all that matters to you anyway, what's all that, what's all this other stuff about? What's all this stuff about like, Having a new car, you what you're gonna take out a second lease on a new car, and so that you gotta get a new promotion. Otherwise, you're gonna forfeit your loan on your what? Mm. What are you doing, bro? Yeah. Just be nice, bro. Just be nice to your wife. Be nice to your kids. You know, like just do your best every day. And, Spend uh, some time with your man, family. And like, like don't get me wrong. Like I'm, I'm, I'm trying to do that every day. Like a hundred percent. Like I, I can do a better job. You know, and that's. That's all that's on my mind, like from when I finish that little meditation in the mm -hmm. morning to when I go to sleep. And um, and this place is, is just an extension of that. Like when I fight now, um, like as a professional, now that, now that it's my profession, so to speak, I don't want to, uh, I'm not really worried about like all these accolades and bouts and everything like that. Like, what do I want from myself out of my career? Like, what kind of, like, fighter, what kind of person do I want to be? How do I want to treat my coaches, you know what I mean? Man, if I make more money, then I can help my coaches maybe more, you know? And I can, like, maybe show a little bit more love to my training partners who, you know, who, who help you get mm. there, you know? And that's what it's all about, you know? We got guys who do such a great job of that in this gym, you know? The boys, like, that are leading the way in the UFC and Israel and everything like that, they... Man, they're the most humble people you could ever meet with when when you consider the platform that they have. Mm. It's unbelievable. The people who talk to me like, uh, you know, it's like kids and everything like that. Uh, man, I'm actually, I actually work at a high school, so that's like that's another thing, you know. Mm. But those students, they ask me, "Hey, sir, do you know uh, do you know Israel? You know?" Yeah. Okay, yeah, I know Israel. I'm not trying to like, I'm not trying to floss on them. I'm like, yeah. yeah, yeah, I know Israel. He trains at my gym. Yeah. Oh, sir, so you so you actually you know him, you talk to him. Yes, yeah, yeah, boys. I I know him, man. Eh? And they go, uh, what's he like? You know? Is mm. it, does he like floss out? You know what I mean? Bro, are you kidding me? <laughs> like, what's going on in these kids here today? Like, what what's the media saying, eh? Like, what do what what do these guys think that mm um successful people like you know and i'm kind of looking at them i'm like man where, where do you guys be? what do your parents do mm. act like when they get a big raise or something like that do they like act like they're the man or something or do they like act like israel when they and they just show love to the people that help them get there mm. and spread the wealth and help help grow like the people around them you know what i mean give back to their community kind of thing and that man when i see people doing that like that's a whole nother level of respect you know it what is I mean? like, it is and like you know, sadly, there are some people who, you know, when they reach a certain stage, mm. they just disassociate themselves from yeah. the people who are not on the same level as yeah. them. But I don't know how, you know, like uh. people can do that. Like, you know, and that's what I love about all the boys here. Mm. You know, like you have, you know, 
like Izzy, Brad, you know, Shane, Kai and all. And you, anybody can just walk up to them, have a conversation. Like at the end of the day, they're normal. They're human beings. Yeah, you know? same rules apply, you know? You know, yeah. yeah. You, if you give them the respect, they'll give you the respect. That's they'll it. talk to you like a normal person. Mm. You know, you don't have to like... It's not what people think there is. Like, you know, it doesn't mean, you know, they've, they've got to that stage. They're not going to talk. They will. Mm. But you've just got to show them respect. And, you know, like even you've got like professional boxers. Yeah, you've got like, you know, Junior Far, You've got uh, Hemi, Ahio and like all, all these guys. And they treat, you know, they talk. They're normal, normal people as well. Human beings. Bro, you know? when I came in the gym, you know, and I and I saw all the boys. I did, like, I didn't know um, when I came back to New Zealand in December. Like, I didn't know that... Um, I knew him, he was training here. I didn't know that, like, they had... Man, I didn't know that everyone was training here. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, everyone who's legit, they're in these walls, mm. you know what I mean? And they're on the bikes right next to the amateur boys that are getting ready. Hey, which, what set you doing today? You know what I mean? Oh, I'm on 15 seconds. I'm on the Tuesdays short stuff, you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, you're on holiday today, bro. Oh, lucky <laughs> you. Oh, I got 12 round CPI, you know what I mean? Oh, damn, you know. Hey, can you help me on Sunday with the spider? Yeah, mm. sure, bro. You know what I mean? Like, I got boys, you know, like just sacrificing their time just because they want you to do well just out of love and just out of respect yeah, man, like definitely. that's the you most wanna you i mean th that's just like that's the brotherhood you mm. know that you have is you want to see the people around you succeed as well as yeah. much as you want to 100 you know so you support them in whatever way mm. you can doesn't have to be monetarily no. you know like even just sometimes like uh, giving you know just being nice you know having empathy yeah. giving nice words you know words yeah. of support that's all it takes, you know, you, someone who doesn't train or who doesn't get into this whole lifestyle. It doesn't matter. Just be nice, you know, like, just ask them how they're doing. How's, you know, how's your day? Like, mm. it's just a small little thing, like, has training been going well? Yeah. That could have made, a, a, a like, a good impact, you know, at the end of the day. And um, we, you don't expect much, no, you know. And no. that's, that's the thing. Like, people think that you've got to do so much. Like, you don't have to, you yeah. know. Just, like, just for me to come back here and, like, these guys open their doors. Um, man, I like, yeah, I think I landed on like Christmas Day and I messaged Eugene and he was like, well, we training on Boxing Day. And I came <laughs> in and, and like, it was on, you know what I mean? Like, like no, uh, I don't have to say, sign no waiver or go through some kind mm. of crazy process about like, or anything like that. It was just, hey, come show up and, um, man, you just prove yourself with your attitude here, which mm. is, which is like, seems to be the, the best way to do it. Yeah, you know? that's, and that's one of the things like, um, he, well, Doug's a bit more, you know, if you're not serious, if you, you know, oh, yeah, if you don't yeah, want to yeah. get out, you know, <laughs> yeah, we don't dog, yeah, get yeah. out of here, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, but that's what, that's what people need. Like, mm -hmm. you know, if you really want to do it, you come here to, to learn something, to yep. get better, to improve yourself, but don't quit, you know. Yeah. But if you're not serious, you come and play, then you don't waste your time. Yeah, you yeah. Know? No, we've got everything, we've got everything you need in here. Like, just like you say, like we've got, you know, we've got some, some guys not going to take as much shit. You know, mm. and some guys that get you, let you get, you know, it's just like, it's like teachers at high school, you know, mm. you just got to, you got to pick your battles everywhere in life, you know what I mean? And that's how it is in this gym too. So it's pretty reflective of real mm. life in my opinion, but just nice, safe environment. It's good. I love yeah. it. I. On that, um, you were saying, just coming back here. So mm. before that, um, you were training at Bali MMA, yeah. is that correct? Yeah, yeah. How's that whole, uh, how long were you there and how's that yeah. whole experience like? Going yeah, there? real quick, shout out to all the boys um, yeah. in Bali they're watching, <laughs> I like, um, I'd love to come for a visit, but I'm not. I'm not gonna go uh, spend two weeks in quarantine <laughs> afterwards. I, I don't need a holiday that bad, eh? or that long, really. Like I could do with a holiday, but not that long. Yo, two um, weeks is a long time yeah. in a hotel room. Oh man, that's I mean, crazy. Like, there's bro. worse things in life. You know how it is. But like, uh, hey, I'd I definitely rather be able to drive my car to this gym and and train. That's the thing. You know, mm. I don't want to spend two weeks away from this place. This place is great. So, but uh, Bali MMA man is a, is a is was a, that your first gym or so oh, i actually started training in auckland i yeah. um man a lot like went to a couple of different gyms and mm. stuff like that when Just i was younger yeah test but here i there. think uh the first place i fought out of was auckland mma mm. in east auckland so shout out to hamish and the boys out there and van also um man like a great a great gym out in pakuranga and um you know, I still have some great guys that, you know, to me, they're my teammates still, you know what I mean? Because they're my brothers, you know, and they got me started and everything. Um, and through that relationship, I was, I was there for a little while. I met, um, I met one of my coaches, one of my best friends, Mike Ikile. 
um, and his partner Nairine, um, who's who's back here. And um, man, I just like, I just broke down with Mike Hart. You know what I mean? Like, he was he was like a real real stand up like mentor for me. You know what I mean? And uh, I gelled with him. I learned a lot of um, a lot of things from him, and like personally and like around uh, Muay Thai specifically, a Muay Thai mm -hmm. coach. And uh, he mo he moved to Bali. You know, I talked mm -hmm. to him about Bali. I've been there for a little bit with one of my teammates, Eve Ting. Yeah. And um, just for like a holiday. Yeah, basically. yeah, holiday, and uh, went out there and everything. Met those guys, and Mike ended up getting a job there. And uh, he called me one day and was like, "Bro, you want to um, you want to turn pro?" And I was like, "Yeah, <laughs> I like I'm working like all these crazy jobs, like." Real crazy jobs, like a, man, people don't even know. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't even talk about it too much. But I was working some weird jobs. Let's just say yeah. weird jobs, <laughs> and um, so you can get to training and like get time off and stuff. You gotta mm -hmm. do some weird jobs, casual jobs and stuff. Living in with my mom and everything like that. I'm 23 or 24, or whatever. And um, I mean, back then I wasn't like, yeah, I wasn't feeling great about my status and you know and all that kind of stuff because mm -hmm. I was like, man, I'm supposed to be buying a house and everything. But so he calls me, say, bro, forget about all this come out here to Bali, you can afford to live on a couple thousand dollars. So get a couple thousand dollars together. I'll look after you for a room. Like I got a room in my place right now for you with your name on it. And um, I'll throw you on the coaching staff, you know, or, you know, like for the for the beginners, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like or, or I'll let you run PTs and stuff to, to get you some cash. And once you start fighting, you'll be okay. You know what I mean? It's so cheap there. Mm -hmm. And so that was a like- very cheap life to yeah, live. Yeah, that there. was like the- that was a tap on the shoulder, like just someone saying like, hey, I believe you could actually do this. Because I, I didn't know how to be a professional fighter. I didn't even know that I could do that in New Zealand. Like I had never been to City Kickboxing. I, I didn't know that, you know, at, right at that time, it was really popping off with, you know, Dan and the boys and they were making inroads and stuff. But um, They were I, ripping it up. Yeah, I just didn't know how to do it, eh? So. Mm. Um, so I, I rolled over there with Mike and it was one of the best things I ever did. You know, like I had so much fun and I grew so much. And that's when I really adopted this mindset where like, right, I'm I'm going from my mom's couch. I'm going over here now. Now my mom's living alone. And, um, and I was in like a long-term relationship at the time. I'm doing long distance, you know, it was getting crazy up in there, you know. Mm. And I'm thinking to myself, Right, what are you doing all this for? You know, you gotta do it for these people back home. So that's when I adopted this mentality, like you gotta sacrifice, you gotta make all this count, you know what I mean? And that was a good lesson to learn, don't get me wrong. But um and obviously, you know, balance it out with the fun, the beach and everything like that. Yeah, you're know, you you know, in Bali, yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm taking <laughs> fights like crazy. I'm trying to be a hero, bro. I'm taking every fight, every paycheck I can get. I need it, you know, I needed it, mm -hmm. even though I could like live okay i needed it you know i want i wanted to come back with some what like enough money to you know take my mom out for breakfast or something like mm -hmm. that you know and so uh man that's crazy like after my first year there i came home after my first six pro fights i made my first journey back home after a year so i took six pro fights in one year actually in the space of like 10 months was it all mma fights all or? MMA, yeah mm. like basically back to back to back you know what i mean six mm -hmm. weeks rinse and repeat Wow. boom like uh 10 months and um came back uh said hey mom let's go for coffee you know what i mean and then uh go to the humble villager on uh on monaco road there which is like probably my favorite cafe in the world mm -hmm. um and my mom still goes there almost every day i meet her there every second day you know so i went there and uh man with that with that if boss card that for the past year or that credit card had solely been fueled by fighting other men in all these crazy places and living by myself in Bali. Wow. I said, Mom, what do you want for breakfast? You know what I mean? Swipe that credit card. Bro, I almost cried right there on the spot. You know what I mean? Like, it was crazy. It was crazy. And I knew that, like, that came from Mike. You know what I mean? Mm. That came from Mike believing in me, you know? And, uh, and it came from my mom believing me when I said, you know, one day I'll be able to do this for real, you know, mm. and it won't just be you like, man, my mum saw me cut weight to 70 kgs by myself, you know, no one was free that day, very first time I cut weight in the bathtub, 76 kilos, 
I cut six kilos in that bath before I fought Talo. Whoa. And Talo is one of our training partners, if you guys don't know. So, <laughs> yo, we, and now, like, you don't even know that, you know what I mean? And so my mom believed in me and, and, and Mike believed in me. And that was, that, that was the story of me going to Bali. Like, I can't tell that story without those guys. And then I went back, did one more year there. Um, man, it was just... It was such a such a cool place to be, and like, mm. had such, learned so many lessons, met so many people. Like, From came Olive. back with the craziest mixed up accent you've ever heard. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> I think and that's like, the thing about Bali is well, crazy. Like, <laughs> you got Americans, you got Malaysians. We're all in one house, and. uh yeah, and then we got Kiwis, and we got Kiwis from all over different parts mm. of New Zealand in the house too. So yeah. it, was like real, it was real different. Like, <laughs> it was crazy. You get a you get a bit of a nasi champo. Uh, yeah, bro, I got the nasi champo <laughs> accent, bro. Yeah, yeah, exactly, bro. That's exactly how we put it. So yeah, and then um, man, I just had this massive yearning. Like uh, I was talking to Kevin about it today, actually. Like you mm. go away and you don't see your friends for two years. You come back. Your friend's 26. He looks exactly the same. Looks like he was when he was 18. You go away for two years and you video call your mom or your auntie or your dad and you see it on their face how how, how different they are, how much older they are, you know? How fast they yeah, are. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're, age. they're aging, you know what I mean? Like, And um, and physically, like, I feel, man, I'm, I'm getting better every day. And, and, and I'm, But then I get a phone call, you know, or a video call from somebody and I'm thinking, damn, like, how are they doing? Like, you know, like mentally, physically, financially and everything like that. And I just felt this pressure. I was like, man, I got to get home. And that was probably like three weeks, three months before the last fight, the last time I fought, last November. That was probably three months. I had this massive feeling like, man, I got to get home. But I need I need to go home with like, you know, a win bonus or something, you know. And and uh, I ended up getting that and, uh, and came home. I went back um, to corner a few boys and, and uh, hang out for a little bit, do a few things in, in the capital there in Jakarta, got to do like a cool commercial and everything. Oh, wow. And then, uh, yeah, flew back on on Christmas Day last year, like just in time for, I literally like landed at like 12 and I got to my cousin's place in Waikoura at like, like one third, like just in time for Christmas lunch. <laughs> yeah. And then the very next day I was, I was in the 10 a.m. class with the boys, you yeah. know, <laughs> and uh, right into like, right into the UFC for Auckland camp situation, you mm. know, like right into like kind of, watching the boys get ready and stuff like that. I'd like to say help, but I was of very little help because like I just didn't I wasn't even on these guys' level. Like I just walked in and was like, damn, like I thought I was I thought I was making some moves. I thought I was good and just came back and just got <laughs> got taught some quick lessons, you know what I mean? <laughs> it took me a whole year now to um to kind of understand why this team is the best team in the world, mm -hmm. you know? And so, uh, you know, that's, hey, that's no disrespect to any other team, but, like, there's only room for one, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> there can only be one, and it's this team right here, you know? We've got, the, we've got something special going on here. We've got so much knowledge inside these walls. Like, if you can't find what you need at this place, then good luck to you, you know what I mean? So, I mean, that's not to say that you can't be a great fighter under other coaches or anything like that. But that's to say that, like, if you train here and you and you've got a problem with it, find another sport. You know what I mean? Mm. Yeah, yeah. It is. It is the best gym in the. It was, you know, rated the best gym mm. in the world for a reason. Mm. Yeah, right? yeah, for sure. Um, and like you know, just the brains behind the whole operation as mm. well. As people don't understand, like you know, yeah, yeah definitely, you, you've got to be of a certain caliber to be able to get to. Mm. A very high level definitely but you've got to make sure that the the you know the brains behind the whole operation people need to understand is it's it's something different altogether you know i don't even i can't even comprehend it i couldn't even <laughs> yeah like when people ask me how training is i'm like i don't even know how it's so good you know what i yeah. mean i guess i love it I, yeah yeah like i mean there's obviously like we're, we're getting better all the time like we haven't figured it out but but that's why I think that the gym is like pushing the boundaries because we like we we pay a lot of attention to detail and mm. the moving pieces and stuff. Super critical um, of our own performances, and uh, so like you know, for me, I just can't wait till I actually get in there, get a chance to show um, show everybody like what I've been working on and all the lessons that I've learned. Hey, you! Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share this video.
who want to get on to like watching your fights, uh, sure. how how do they how do they watch? The, uh, or where's it going to be on? That's a great question. Mm. So basically, um, I think it's www.bravecf.tv. Dot TV. Yeah, okay. and I mean, if that's not it, then definitely just Google Brave CF. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, like, if you guys want to watch that, it's free in watch New it. Zealand. Hey. Um, like, it's a hundred percent free. You go to that place; it's gonna ask you to subscribe. Yeah. Yo, it's free. Yo, don't be scared. Subscribe, as in, like, put your details in, mm. put your email. They're gonna send you a confirmation email. Click it. When it goes live you'll get that event live and you'll get to replay that event live for about a week or two. Yo, so, how so, good is that, Yeah, it's man. crazy, bro. It's like, That's crazy. So because they stream they stream through the Fight app, F-I-T-E app in the States, and then um, and a couple other places where they don't have the broadcasting rights, mm. but they don't have anything in, in a place like New Zealand, so they've just got the subscription on this site kind mm. of thing. And you just... Um, stream from yeah, the yeah. website and then in the itself. Middle East it's all broadcast live They've, they love yeah, fighting they, yeah, bro yeah. they have it like on their channels oh, jiu jitsu and like... all, all year round and it's like who likes watching that you know yeah. what I mean, <laughs> and I, I, mean love, I love jiu jitsu but I'm not watching no bloody I'm not watching ADCC so bro, I don't even watch like I don't even really watch that much stand up fights or MMA yeah. fights so just, bro like how much fighting can I deal with you know yeah, what I mean? not, not that many <laughs> nah, man I'm in here with the boys you but know? it's, it's yeah, also what, what they're doing like um you know not putting a price on the eh, man i think you know man we should you should get we should like really get it out there like it's yeah. got it's free you guys know? it's it's like a hundred percent free and it's gonna be november 5th um i think here is is the friday mm -hmm. um it's so it's friday now it's not next friday it's the friday afterwards and it's gonna be in the morning I would say 6 a.m. to 8 a.m. 6 to I mean? 8 a.m. Because in Bahrain time, it'll be Thursday night. Yeah, so, so that's how the time they'll be. Yeah. They're following their prime time. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. I don't know what they do on Saturday nights in the Middle East, but they don't do <laughs> shows on Saturday nights. But they got they obviously got a rule against I think, it or something. Bro, I think like um, one of the things uh, it's like uh, weekends is like their family time, eh? Probably, and they're, yeah. they're pretty serious oh, about yeah. their family time, yeah, man. They're pretty serious in general. Like, <laughs> they're pretty serious out there in general, it seems. Yeah. Like, I went for a trip to Bahrain last year mm. um, to watch to watch a show. Mm. And um, and I put my hand up to go because there was a couple of lightweight fights on there. And I was thinking, mm. oh, for sure, one of these bums misses weight, you know. And, yeah. I, mean, and I get to step in and stay, save the show and get yeah, an extra payday, you know. Um Money in the bank. Yeah, and those pricks all made weight and everything. Yeah. So I just went and hung out and stuff, and like yeah. I felt like a boss, you know. Yeah, like, bro, real middle, like uh, just like a funny side note, you know, like the the WWE model, UFC Eastern model, and one FC is kind of like you know respect martial arts, mm -hmm. you know, bow. They're athletes, they're not fighters, you know. Mm -hmm. They they just kind of like change it up a little bit. It seemed that when I was in Bahrain, like they were fully embracing like the, um the gold Lexus mentality kind of thing, Ooh. you know, like, bro, they brought the belt in, the belt for um, the four-man tournament they did, they flew it in on a helicopter, they drove it into the ring, like, it's, it was, like, the most expensive prize in combat sports, they drove it in on, like, a gold, like, uh, Mercedes-Benz, you know, Whoa. like, it was, it's just crazy, and, you know, like, they got, like, I don't really know um, much about it, you know, or, mm. or like, the different... Um, titles that the guys hold but they got they had some big wigs there let's just say that like some big dogs there that must have some uh a few spare dollars lying around let's say you know what i mean mm. like that they don't worry about it too much and uh that seems to be a bit of a bit of their part of their promotion and everything like that so i mean yeah i mean i'm not going out I, I never go anywhere with my hat in my hand but i'll be going over there like hey boys you want to pay me a little extra go ahead you know what i mean like i'm ready for it eh? like i don't hate money you know yeah, what definitely, I mean? man. i'm not all about yeah. money but i don't hate it so if you guys want to open up the checkbook and like look yeah, after why me, not well, let's go you know? so hopefully i can get my hands on that belt next and then uh Oof. and then i have a little bit more uh negotiating chips you know mm. yeah, so yeah that would that would definitely help you know definitely when you have that title mm. you know you it's always a have of time you know what i mean like that's the only reason i want it and i don't want it because it's like important for my ego or anything i want it so that i 
you know more money means more purpose you know Definitely. it's not more money more problems more money more purpose you know you make that money stretch you know mm. you waste it yeah you do dumb stuff with your money yeah, I, I think that's bad, the but. the other one you know yourself having have experienced um a little bit more in life compared to some others you know like you be a bit more smarter with how you spend money now yeah bro i don't spend no money <laughs> yeah you know and like I hey, my pennies, bro. that's it yeah. you know and um you know that's you, you've you've learned your lesson so that you you wouldn't make that mistake you know yeah, yeah. and um like you know having these titles or even like rankings and stuff like that obviously it's help, it, it helps mm -hmm. you know and uh, like also um, so what kind of deal do you currently have with Brave CF? Is yeah. it like a um, certain number of fights? So or? yeah, like at the moment I'm ex I've signed exclusively with Brave, you know. Um, there's obviously a little bit of wiggle room around it because of the COVID and everything like that. Like if things get really, really crazy, I think that um, there'd, be, there'd be some, I don't know, I don't know, be, but it's... It is what it is, you know. Like mm -hmm. I'm with those guys for now and I'm, I, and I'm very happy about it, don't mm -hmm. get me wrong. Um... They and they I look after got, you. Yeah, they look after me, and um, I have I think five fights with those guys, um, and that by the end of that I have that big belt around my waist, and and it'll be all gravy, you know. And we just sit down and we negotiate the next one, you know what I mean? And, and that'll all take care. I leave that up to the to the higher ups, you know, above mm -hmm. me, you know. That's above my pay grade, you know. And fair enough. So I don't really I don't really pay attention to that. Mm -hmm. Like anything that's out of my control. Mm -hmm. I don't really want anything to do with it. You, know? you have a yeah. have a team or a manager yeah, to help yeah. you so kind with, of um, suss all that out. Yeah, challenger sports management. Mm -hmm. um, they got a few um, fighters here in New Zealand, a couple others overseas, um, and a couple of the boys now um, that that train with us and stuff like that. And they do a good job. And I just I leave it to them. Leave it, it to the pros. Yeah, eh? yeah, yeah, exactly. Like don't. Um, I think that's the other one. Like don't stress yourself over stuff that you can't control there's no point I'm you a know? big believer in like just doing your job you know mm. you don't have to do, be I'm not saying like you have to stay in your lane and just do what you know how to do and you can't ever like grow as a person and learn new skills and everything like that but if there's something that you do really well then it's your job like it's your duty as a human to go and do that to mm. the best of your ability I'm a fighter that's what I what I do when I go in the gym I give it 100% um, when I go to buy a coffee, I'm expecting that barista to give it a good crack. Yeah. Hey, don't don't make my coffee fifty percent. Don't be half ass of my coffee. It's gonna ruin my day. You half ass my coffee. I have a shit coffee. I show up to the gym with a bad attitude. I give fifty percent and mm. easy. You know what I mean? The whole world works like that. You mm. know, somebody's job is to figure out this goddamn recycling. You mm. know what I mean? I'm not gonna what. I'm not gonna sit around being like, oh man, how do we save the planet? Hey. Leave that to the pro. You yeah. Know what I mean? <laughs> Somebody's got to figure out my contract. It ain't me. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know? So, like, you know, I got people looking after me, um, you know, when you get close, you know, I need a dietitian. Mm. Hey, my man, Jordy, the fight dietitian. Yeah. He knows fight what dietitian, he's doing. Yeah. He's, uh, he's, he's been well getting, known around these yeah, parts. Man, hey, yeah, man. He's been getting a lot a of shout outs. Really <laughs> you know he mean? is, eh? And he's one of the homies. Like, he mm. just looks after the boys and everything like that. He knows what it's like to be a regular person, a regular fighter. And and he's not like he's not big time in you like mm. he works with the best and he works with the boys here you mm -hmm. know that don't have like two pennies to rub together you know what I mean like he's gonna help you out he's he's the man bro and like people like that who are just solely focused on doing their job the best they can and that's their service to bloody humanity or whatever you want to call it you mm -hmm. know that's the service to the community you know how how much has it um helped you with like having a, a proper Oh man, crazy. nutrition, uh, dietitian. Crazy. I don't even know. Like I shared a video on my Instagram the other day uh, from my first fight in Brave. Yeah, my second pro fight, which evidently was nine days after my first pro fight. Oh, <laughs> yeah, bro. Because my, <laughs> which is kind of a crazy story. Like my first pro fight. I mean, what is it even a pro fight if you basically pay yourself? You know what I mean? Like, or like you basically pay them? Like, you know, they don't they don't buy you flights. They don't buy you hotel they don't give you food money oh. they don't give you nothing you stand at your boy's house in his garage and you oh. you know you took the 400 dollars you got from fighting to pay for your flight to get to australia i mean okay goes on my went down as a dub on my pro debut so i mm. wasn't complaining but like you know a week before that uh or two weeks before that 
you know, I, I, I know this deal is I'm not really getting any money out of this. I just need a notch under my belt, you know. Um, one of my boys said, hey, Braves come into Jakarta. They want someone from Bali MMA. <coughs> They'll pay you actual money, like mm. real money. You real make, money, yeah. You will make money. You won't, like, make a lot of mm. money, obviously, but you will make money. Guy missed weight, made a little extra money, so it was good. Um but yeah, so nine days after that, I fought my second pro fight. So I got off to a cracker of a start, 2-0, and oh, you know, nine Ooh. days. It was good, you know, and that started a real nice busy year for me. Mm. But um, I shared the video from that, and I'm like ground and pound, and the dude, I get to finish. Bro, I'm so skinny. Like, I fight at the same weight. Like, I'm skinny. I got no muscle. And, like, I was kind of, like, joking because, like, I didn't have enough money to have a dietitian or have someone, like – you know, a dietitian, not even a bloody nutritionist, not even a PT that would be like, hey, don't eat after six or some mm. some whack advice. You know what I mean? Like, I was just making up on the fly. I was like, I'd wake up, check my weight. If I was heavy, I'd eat less. You know what I mean? If I was light, I'd eat more. And um, and I was just like, man, that I can't even, I, I shared that thing, like almost like, I can't even believe that was how I was doing it, eh? You know, like, mm. and obvi- obviously that's, how you have to do it and that's how you have to learn not to make those same mistakes so now i know the value of uh having someone like geordie behind me and um like man that like the the benefits of it is just crazy like it's just crazy you how much this guy had, has me eat bro mm. yeah like uh man i do like one meal that like especially like when i'm like on the real high calorie plan which is pretty much right now mm. pretty high calorie uh, like the sta- I call it the stallion pizza like <laughs> you know it's basically a dessert pizza you know a tortilla wrap you know with like Ooh. mad peanut butter and, like you know like two tablespoons of peanut butter and honey and a banana and everything like that wow. and I wash that down with a protein shake and a cup of coffee and I feel great you know and that's a snack that's snack number one you know one of three or whatever it is and then you've got your meals you've got your rice after training and stuff like that obviously like you still have to show discipline like mm. when I put food on a scale and it says 200 grams or one cup of rice or whatever, I still want that scale. I still want to read two cups of rice. Mm. I just want to put that on there. So you've got to show a little discipline. But um, but you know that like everything that your body needs, it's getting. Mm. And anything that you want more is just you've been like a, just a hungry guy. You know yeah. what I mean? And I've got problems, you know what I mean? So I would, if I could eat as much as I wanted, I would be doing that, but like we said earlier. Which is what, you know, yeah, which is what hey, we said earlier. Do I want to eat everything under the sun, or do I want to make weight and, and collect the cha- the um, collect the check at the end of the day? You mm. know what I mean? Well, I, it's yeah. just that discipline, eh? It, it, yeah. it is. It's good for you, you know. It is. It is, and I think like um, it's in the beginning, it's gonna be really hard. Yeah. But yeah. once you build a habit, it just gets easier. Yeah. Yeah. And Definitely. it won't be uh, as much of a uh, struggle, eh? Mm. Um. So yeah, you from uh, training, fighting up from Bali MMA with Brave and all that, and coming back here, and obviously now heading to your next fight. Um, the other one was um, this fight that was initially planned for mm. uh, was supposed to be with a different guy. Yeah, and uh, so he pulled out for some reason. Yeah, and they changed your opponent. Does that affect? Um, like uh, how it's going to lead up to a title fight or where does this place you? Does it? Yeah, I mean, that's a great question. You know, I actually thought you were going somewhere else with the whole game planning stuff. Like, does uh, it affect the game plan? Man, of course it does. Six, it, two to five, eight. Yeah. <laughs> and like, what do you do different? Everything. So like, yeah. <laughs> thanks for avoiding that one because I covered that already. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? So, and you know what it is. Mm. You pick different tools and we got all the tools downstairs. So it that's doesn't matter, it. you know, we've got them all in there. We just change it up in our little tool mm. belt here so uh that, that is what it is but basically uh yeah i mean this fight was built for a long time and uh you know short story long because you know we're already here and we're doing a podcast and everything might as like, well yeah <laughs> last year after i fought uh Masiek and i got a good finish and sam patterson had got a good finish off a guy who had a lot of hype behind him and stuff like that they uh kind of build us you know, oh, these guys are, you know, with these guys nomination, breakthrough fighters of the year or whatever. And I ended up getting the nod as like the Brave Combat Federation breakthrough fighter of the year for 2019, which is, uh, you know, don't get me wrong, happy to have, be acknowledged, but 
you know, I don't care. I don't care. So <laughs> it is what it is, you know. It's an Instagram award, you know yeah. what I mean? There's no, like, like I said, like people in my life didn't, didn't feel nothing. They just said, oh, good job, John, you know. Okay, thanks, guys. So <laughs> I got that, and then immediately they started building these two. Okay, well, these two need to fight then, you know, two, like, uh, kind of budding stars. I think he might be six or seven and one, and I'm six and one. Uh, and then we were slated to fight in April and I'm getting ready for that doing a, like an extra long camp here at CKB and then uh, the COVID the COVID hit eh? the mighty COVID the COVID yeah yeah, yeah the boogeyman eh? the boogeyman of the fight game came along Ugh. put a stopper <laughs> on that and then um, yeah I mean that they threw a couple more names at me and they threw his name back in the mix okay sweet and then we actually had a date he got a uh, we had a date Oh, okay, yeah, I'm working for this one. Then I take a look at Brave, Sam Patterson versus Felipe Silva. Hey, hold on. Mm-hmm. Hey. I didn't sign a contract, but I was I I was on the phone and I agreed to fight this guy, Sam Patterson, mm-hmm. on that date. So what's going on here? Oh, I don't know what happened. I think it's something to do with the visas and everything like that. Yeah, yada yada yada. And um he KO'd Felipe Silva. Wow man, nice first round KO. Good job, Sam. You know, or like much respect. Uh, Felipe Silva, you know, ex UFC guy, fought Barbosa, fought some really tough guys in the UFC, uh, multiple weight classes, if I remember correct. Um, tough guy. And so I was like, man, that's cool. Like, because I was actually asking for Felipe Silva before that as well. Mm. So I was like, all right, sweet. Well, he did he did the business. He got rid of him. He goes to the back of the pack, take care of him. Um, so now it's me and Sam. Okay, get the contract. A couple weeks you know, maybe four or five weeks ago. Okay, well, I've been training for this guy all year anyway. Yeah, I'll sign that contract. Now, when I sign the contract, what what am I doing there? You know, when you, when you look at it principally, what am I doing there? I'm putting my word down that I fight you on this date. I show up and I fight you. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's what I did. And then uh, a couple of weeks ago, Sam Patterson uh, got sick or something like that. He... Or I don't know what the real story is. Mm. He can't make the fight. Now, for me, that's a win for me, but by a forfeit, because I didn't say it didn't say on the contract that if you get sick you don't show up. It doesn't say that if you break your hand you don't show up. It says you go and you fight. So, mark my words, and I take this very seriously. Obviously. I'm like, you don't need a contract, you know. I've signed the contract already. If I break my hand tomorrow, I still fight on November 5th because that's what I do. I don't, you know, it's like that Scarface line. Eh? Like I got my, what is it? I got two things in this world. I got my word and my balls. I don't break them for no one. Mm. I don't know. That's a great movie and everything, but that's not why I say that. I I just don't, I don't feel comfortable doing that, you know. Every um contract I've ever signed, I said I was going to make weight. I'm never miss weight. Mm. You, you deliver you, what you... You miss weight, then you're not a man. Like, you know, mm. if you say... And obviously, like, hey, listen, some of my boys miss weight before and I'm not going to go and have a crack. <laughs> yeah. it, you know I mean? But listen, like, mistakes happen and everything. Mm. But that was a choice from Sam. Mm. Like, when you miss weight, right, you give up your money. That's fair then, mm. okay? You give up some money, all right, whatever. But, I mean, still, you know, this guy said he was going to fight. Now he doesn't fight. Well, the consequence is that is you lose via forfeit. So I won that fight in my head. Mm. You, you know, it's a mental now, win already. So I won. I beat that guy. Um, <laughs> I beat Sam, and then I'm gonna beat Rolando. And then I've already accepted to fight every other lightweight in the division. Some of them I've actually signed contracts for, and they've pulled out in this past year. Some I said yes to, and Brave couldn't make it happen, COVID or otherwise. Um, who's left? You know, if if I beat Rolando. And, I, and by no means do I look past this man, you know. But uh, when I beat Rolando, then there's nobody else in line. You know, it's just me now. Because if you guys want to come out of the woodwork now and say, oh, you got to fight me first, um, you had your chance, bro. Mm. And you passed it up. I don't care if you had a bloody wedding in bloody Morocco. Mm. I don't care if you got sick and you fought back to back. I don't care if you had a sore, sore knee or a sore back. I just don't care if a pandemic hit. You had your chance. Fights took place. You didn't, you didn't fight want to me. Fight. You didn't yeah. want to fight me. Well, go to the back of the line, bro, and start again. You know mm. what I mean? Like that's just how I feel right now, and I'm not. 
I'm probably a little bit salty about like this whole year off and like, but listen, you do as many spiders as I've done mm-hmm. for nothing. Hey, you'd be a little bit salty. Yeah, not for it, me, but like the boys. Hey, Saturday nights, I got four, five, six, seven boys canceling dinner, taking time off away from their family to come and help me do a spider so that I can punch them in the face and lift them up and down and get them all sweaty. They get nothing out of it. And I got to get those people to do that 16 times. And every other time they show up and hold pads for me and do conditioning with me and hold timers and motivate me and everything like that. Jordy, how many bloody diets? How many times has he updated How many my diet plans is plans he? Plans and he's sitting there crunching numbers. The wears brings in the scales. I step on the scales. You know, coaches cancel plans because I've got a fight in two weeks. They need to do the pad session. I hit that pad session. I get a call fight off. Oh, hey, you're going to give that guy his time back? Nah. That's not like, that's, to me, that is no bueno. Like, that mm-hmm. is just ridiculous. You know what I mean? So, all those guys say what you want. Bro, if you guys want to fight and you think you're a better fighter, then come fight me in New Zealand, mm-hmm. bro. And then we'll film it. We'll send it to Brave. I'm better. Go home. Whatever. I don't care, you know? Like, but I'm fighting for the bout next. Like, that in my head... It is going to happen. In my head... It is going to happen. This is the bout right here, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, this is my bout. Like, just just going in and sleeping this guy you know what i mean so somebody's got to pay bro. someone's got to pay someone's got to pay someone's got to pay and like all those work mm. didn't didn't just happen for nothing no nah, nah, bro no way no way man so hey you don't forget to subscribe like and share this video um, so right now where does the title like there's there's nobody really like holding the title or... i mean that's the that's the real beauty of brave combat federation is like we don't have no rankings, you know. It's the mm. Wild West out here. We're signing new boys left, right, and center. We got guys coming out of the UFC, coming straight into the top of the mix. Okay, let me get rid of that guy and prove to everybody that like these guys are no better than me. You know what I mean? Like, and that doesn't mean that there's guys in the UFC that aren't obviously superstars and amazing, but like just because just because you fight in the UFC or just because you've got a belt from Abu Dhabi Warriors or just because you've got the belt from Brave it doesn't mean nothing you Mm. know what I mean that's the beauty of Brave right now is that it's kind of it's kind of like a really raw testing pool you know Mm. what I mean and everyone's just getting thrown and there's guys in there that are 4-0 they fought nobodies they're going to get paired up with the 12-0 guy who's fought studs in Dagestan on local shows doesn't have a belt doesn't have nobody knows them and then you get to watch it like live and you get to watch this cat who thinks he's the shit go in and just get molly whopped by some kid you know and you're just like damn like it's, man you see people get dirt get done dirty you know and they yeah. show up at the wayans shop at the wayans balenciaga tracksuits <laughs> they think they're the shit you know boys from italy or whoever it is you know what i mean and they just get found out so quick bro you know it's like yeah so it's it's wide open so like with all that said as doggedly determined as i am to fight for the bout next i'm very much aware of how it is Mm. And I know that the guys, as much as I care about it, the guy who's running this show, he don't care if I did 16 spiders. He doesn't care if I do a million spiders. He doesn't care if I'm a millionaire or got zero dollars. You know what I mean? Like, he's going to do what's best for him and uh, and credit to him. You know what I mean? Whoever's in charge there. Yeah, go the matchmakers. Do yeah, matchmakers. Do your best. Do whatever you think is best for you. You know what I mean? And I'm going to keep doing what's best for me. But, like, in an ideal world for me, obviously, hopefully those interests line up. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. And definitely with a, a, I think it's, what's, like, uh, good is having a good management team to kind of work out those things for you, you know. So you can just fully focus on what you need to do. Definitely. They can work on that. Yeah, And then sort of meet in the middle. Yeah, sometimes, like, I get, yeah, like, I never, like, step into the discussions and stuff, but every now and then I write myself a little story in my head when I've got too much time, and I'm like, you know what? You actually deserve that, bro. You know what I mean? So, like, I don't get crazy with it. Mm-hmm. I try not to lose sleep or anything like that. Mm-hmm. But sometimes I like the story in my head. I'm just like, yeah, bro, you're going to get it because you deserve it, you know what I mean? Definitely, definitely. Yeah, yeah. I think your your um, work ethic, you know, it, it, it says a lot, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I never get to. St- I never step back and look at it like that. You know what I mean? Because mm. I'm, I'm the one doing the work. You so just I hope yeah. So. You just like constantly yeah. putting in the work without even you, know, you see you see without even realizing you just yeah. turn up. Yeah, yeah. I just turn up. You know. And you you have that mentality where you know even if like you know you you hurt your fingernail, 
you know, like or whatever, yeah, you know, yeah. you hurt your knee, your elbow, this, that, whatnot. You're still going to turn up. You're yeah, going to do it. Yeah. Might not be your best day. Yeah, it might not be, bro. I might get, bro, I might show up with a broken hand, get tapped in one second. Yeah. I might show up with a concussion and get KO'd in one second. You know what I mean? Like, that just is what it is. But I'll be damned if I don't show up. You know mm. what I mean? So On that topic of, like, cutting weight, which was pretty mm. interesting because... Um, yeah, that last one uh, after the UFC event. Yeah, and yeah. Um, I, I actually heard... really wanted to just roast that guy as soon as those words were coming out of my mouth. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, and when I heard, um, you know, Eugene, he got into uh, he, he got into a little bit of it and uh, mm. he didn't seem too happy about, you know, the guy not making the weight. And what is, what do you, what, like, I sort of, I, yeah, I sort of understand what your view is, but like, Correct me if I'm wrong. Like I think I feel like it's almost like what Eugene said. It's like cheating. Yep. When you turn up to a fight, not making weight. Mm. It's um, it's a two part contract. Mm. One part is showing up to fight, and one part is not making weight. How mad would everyone be if Shane made the walk, and then the guy's music played, and he just decided, I'm not going to make the walk, and the broadcast is sitting there. Hey, hey, where is this guy? His music's playing. He's not walking out. He's not fighting. Shane's in there ready to go. Guy doesn't walk out. Yeah. Well, now that guy's not going to get paid, right? Because mm. he didn't do the second part of his contract. So what? The first part of the contract he doesn't have to do? The second part he does? It doesn't make any sense, bro. It doesn't make any sense. Like, yeah, I just I just feel like once you, once you miss like that, like, Listen, we all we we have we we've been everyone at that level has been in the sport a long time, and we understand that mistakes can be made in this process, mm-hmm. and it is a crazy process. You know, we 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 don't even need to de- debate like where the weight comes right because no one knows the answer. You know, like mm-hmm. we we could we could we, you could, you'd have to start you'd have to do seventeen podcast episodes for that, yeah. you know? <laughs> and like fifteen different batteries. But like, yeah. yeah, it's like it's one of those things. Like mistakes happen, but then there is like purposely making a calculated equation in your head mm. and deciding not to make your best effort. And that is just, it's just more reflective of that person. And like, to me, that that's a dog move. You know, I don't know that person. I don't know what his motivation was. Like he might have something going on or whatever. But to me, I wouldn't be comfortable doing that to somebody. You know what I mean? I, wouldn't, I just wouldn't be comfortable with myself putting putting my word down, saying I was going to make the way and not doing it. That's just... Yeah, not yeah. not committing to what you... I mean, um, there's cheating and then there's just like disrespect. You know what I mean? Like, hey, like my favorite rugby player growing up was Richard McCaw. Now, you know, he put his hand on the ball on the ruck when he was off his feet. You know what I mean? He raked the ball a little bit, you know? And, mm. you know, and, that's, and that's the game. You know what I mean? Like, you've got to get ahead... Like everyone, but everyone plays that game that way and it's fair, you know? You know, everyone gets a one pound allowance. Yeah, okay, yeah, it's fair. You know what I mean? Like we understand we make mistakes, it's fair. Then there's like purposely Mm -hmm. doing what that guy did and it's a different story when you don't even try and you don't show respect, you know? It's a different, it's a whole nother thing. We can see it, you know what I mean? That's why it hurts. That's why it hurts to be on the receiving end because you can see it, you know what I mean? Mm. It's just... Yeah, it's not on, eh? Do you think that um, the percentage cut is enough? Or do you reckon there should be like a heavier kind of penalty for a, that? A two-part contract, 50%. And mm. I just thought of that on the spot, at least. You know what I mean? 50%. You did half the job. I'm mm. not saying you didn't do... I'm not, you know, and we know you didn't try and everything. So you did half the job, you get half the money. Okay. And, and you do not get a win bonus. You get half your show money because you showed up, but you didn't win that fight because you didn't do the other, you know. So potentially, then the way up, you know, if I'm if you're making, let's say, you take ten and ten for the start the base contract for UFC, you show up and you fight for ten and ten, and you do what that guy did, right? And you miss weight, and you win your fight, you get ten and ten, you get twenty Gs, mm. and they take twenty percent. So you still walk away with like, wow, that's how bad my mass is. I don't know, like, <laughs> hey, somebody do the mass on that 15, 16, whatever, yeah. you know? You walk away with 16K. Or 
you take 50% of that guy's show money, he doesn't get a win bonus. Now he shows up on his 10 and 10 contract, he misses weight, he wins his fight, he gets 5K. Mm. Yep. Fair. That's fair. He is not going to miss weight. Again. He's walking up to the scale mm. thinking, I either make 20 Gs if I win this fight and I make weight. If I do both parts of that contract and I get the win, I get 20 Gs. If I half-ass it and then I win the fight, I make 5 Gs? No, 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 no. I'm going to do my best. Hey, yeah, like, mm. damn, I think it will change uh, quite solve, a few people's mindset solve, with that. Yeah, 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 with that problem. Damn. Hopefully, they. Um, but well, you know, they're not going to listen to us. Yeah, uh, who are we <laughs> anyway? Unfortun- what do unfortun- we know? <laughs> unfortunately, they're not listening to John Brown speak. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> hey, get hey, it right, boys. The, hey, listen I think up, it's interesting up, the the nickname that you have, mm. John Trouble Bruin. Mm. How did that come about? Okay, so that that is that one got coined from my boy uh, Daniel Fletcher. He's actually an author. Um, someone said he wrote one good book, right? I don't know which one it is. I think it's called Jack Boot Britain. And that's how he was, uh, surviving with, uh, with us out there in Bali for a little bit. Uh, a okay. long time friend of the, some of the boys, uh, the Leon, Leone brothers in Bali. And, uh, old Fletch is a, he's an author. So he would write like, uh, articles for MMA sites back in the day and everything oh, wow. like that. And while we were in Bali, like there were three of us who fought on that first show in Jakarta. And um, he wrote the line like, "There's trouble brewing in Jakarta." Ooh, and that, guy, that was how. And, uh, and I was like, "Damn, it's a good pun." You know what I mean? Mm. And then the next show I showed up to at Brave, they're like, "Oh, hey, like, um, do you have a nickname or something?" I said, "Nah." They're like, "Yo, what about like, I saw your boy wrote that article like trouble, trouble brewing, yeah. trouble is brewing or something like that," and I was like. If you use it if you want to use it. And they're like, what about trouble? I was like, yeah. So like, it was kind of like an afterthought. Fletch termed it. And he was actually calling me trouble. Like he would just like, uh, he you, if he gives you a nickname and no one else uses it, he's still going to call you that. Yeah. He doesn't care. Like that's your name now. <laughs> so I'd go over to the boy's place, you know, for a barbecue. He's like, what's up, trouble? Trouble. You know, yeah, you. trouble's here, you know <laughs> what I mean? And like, I kind of got it, you know, it was funny and everything. But then it actually stuck mm. once um, Brave, the guy, uh, Lucas at Brave, um, dropped it, dropped it like on the actual. They put it official. Thing. Yeah, it's on everything. And now. it's crazy now because like, I had a chat with one of the the media um, ladies at Brave, and, and she was kind of asking me about that, and I kind of thought about it, kind of like attributed, or oh, kind of allocated my own meaning to it. You know what I mean? Mm. And and uh, when we were talking about David Neathy mm. earlier, and like kind of like what he speaks about, like you know, getting into that zone, and almost like an alter ego and kind of thing, like. I kind of treat it like that. Like, mm-hmm. it's funny because like I, I really don't want any problems or any trouble with anybody in in my regular life or whatever. And the way I describe it, and it's corny ass, bro. You know, the way I describe it is like, <laughs> it's alright. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> you sign to fight me, now you're in trouble, bro. Ooh, that's a good that's a good that's a good catch to it I don't want no trouble you know what I mean but if you sign to fight now you know what you're in for that's what my nickname is now when you sign to fight me now you're in some trouble now now, and of course like trouble trouble is brewing oh this guy's in trouble you know it lends itself to a few good puns I'm just grateful that the boys have been picking up because like in this fight when I've been sharing like the Instagram stories Boys have been hitting me with bangers. Like, you know, boys have been coming up with great puns. For yeah. Them, so. Like, I just... So many creative... Man, uh... it's so good, man. <laughs> like, it's, it's been... Like, I'm not... A, I hate being on my phone, bro. But mm. for some reason, like, this one, like, this has been hilarious. Like, every time I look down at my phone or, like, check Instagram or something, someone's got a new little joke for me or something like that. And it's just all love and it's all positivity and it's and it's all good, like... It wasn't always like that, you know. I used to look at my phone, and be like, oh god damn, I gotta take this phone call, ah. you know, mm-hmm. or like, oh what, like, oh now I gotta do this post, or like, you know, or somebody's messaged me and I don't want to answer it or something. Maybe it's just because I switched from Android to iPhone because I'm rich now and everything, <laughs> yeah. you know. But like, make it hey, a little these, bit of dope. <laughs> hey, these iPhones are real, eh? You know, yeah. so like, you know, I broke my old phone and I was like, man, I can't deal with this no more. I'm gonna buy an iPhone, and it's been bloody nice, eh? You know, mm-hmm. so. Old, old Steve Jobs, you know, rest in peace, my bro. He did a good job. Yeah, right? he did. Eh? He <laughs> yeah, did a good yeah, job. He was a good job. This is an interesting one. I, I think oh, I just yeah. had a conversation mm. with, with somebody about Steve Jobs just recently. 
as much as he's done so much, mm. like with the iPhone, Apple, mm. this, that, whatnot, like he really was an ass. Oh yeah, another uh, an uh, another asshole for the list of greats. You know, yeah. what I mean? <laughs> you know another another <laughs> another guy on like you know the yeah. pedestal who just turned out to be an absolute. Yeah, bastard, it was know? like it didn't. It at that point it didn't really come out mm. until like after a while. Yeah, yeah. Stories started oh, coming yeah, out. People shared. You got to give it a little bit of time. Yeah, you know, before you start calling someone De- who's deceased. Definitely, a yeah. Bloody, uh, a bloody yeah. mean guy, let's say. You know, you know? but yeah, that was that was I think one of the the ones that people got the wrong idea. You mm. know, he they thought that to be Steve Jobs you had to be an ass. Nah, nah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. That was like the, so for, yeah. for a period that of time. Beca- that was like the narrative, eh? Yeah. Like, you want to pe- be the man, you've got to be an ass. you got to be an ass. Hey, like, like, come on, yeah. Yeah, it's you know. Just, and I think like uh, people like uh, Gary V, you know, mm-hmm. he's trying to change that whole oh, mindset. Yeah. Gary, I like Gary V, yeah. Well, I, yeah, yeah. I listen to a lot of his stuff, mm-hmm. man. That guy, um, what I like is he, he shares yeah. stuff, man. And he's not, he's not worried about mm-hmm. like, Bro, some of the stuff that he's teaching people and sharing, like, man, you were thinking, man, you got to pay money to hear yeah, this yeah. shit, you know? Like, and he's, just, he it's, doesn't care. It's bro. kind of refreshing because he's like, bro, I don't care. Like, if I can mentor you mm. and you can develop a good company and you're a beast, then one day I got a good beast of a partner and you're going to be more valuable than, to me than the $100 seminar I sold you and then I never see you. And That's because it. I sell it to you with a price tag of $100, how do I know you that the guy who's out there with the with the genius inside him, how do I know he has a hundred dollars? Mm. Now I'm only preaching my secrets to guys who have a hundred dollars, but I can give them to everybody. And the guy who doesn't have a hundred dollars that takes off, he'll be the guy who shows gratitude and he'll be the guy mm. who reaches back to me and say, Man, hey, remember that time you came and tapped me on the shoulder and said, I believe in you? Um, bro, now I've got this thing popping off. You think you want to partner up? You know what I mean? Like yeah. that's that's the beauty of and like even community like, focus. Yeah, you know? even like he was saying, you know, how mm. people hit him up and say, you know, it's because of you I did this, 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 mm. and now I'm here. Man. And he was like, he feeds of that, you yeah. know, that to him is bigger of an achievement than a monetary yeah, yeah. achievement, you know. Absolutely, bro. I was like, like yo, but so he, much more valuable. That's it, and he's um, you know, he's obviously, you know, he's got a lot of money and mm-hmm. he's very successful, but. Like he's on another level, bro. Yeah, bro. And uh, I think he's really setting like a good example out there. Yeah, yeah. He might not be the perfect guy. You yeah, know? yeah. I'm not, 100%. We're not saying he is, or everybody has their, you know, their faults and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. But like he's setting a good bar, you yeah. know. And it, it's in you know having empathy, you yeah. know, and being a good, being a just a good person, man. Yeah, yeah. You know, and like just helping people, even if you, whatever it might be, you know, mm-hmm. just give them some good words, some you know, some support and shit like that, yeah, like. Man. He, one of the things that I kind of, that really surprised me about him is like, you'd see on some of the, uh, the the posts that he puts up, you know, on some guys who like, you know, this guy's like, what well, you know, what we talked about, like, you know, people who say, who are not patient, or they say that I want to do this, 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 this. And then he goes, how long have you been doing it for? Or a month. And like. I stole that one from Gary Vee. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> and he was saying like, you know, you gotta have patience, man. Yeah. You gotta keep doing it. Like 100%. Joe Rogan didn't build, build, you know, the Joe Rogan experience didn't sell for 100 million on Spotify just mm. in one year. He took no. like, I think 11 years yeah, to bro. get to that level, you know, and obviously he had a lot of good decisions mm. and he had the, you know, uh, good people, but he just, one of the things that I loved was he just wanted to talk to people, bro. Exactly. And that was fucking awesome. Like, you just want to talk and mm. share and like, you know, um, Everybody has, I think, like, ideally, everybody's a storyteller. Everybody has a story. Well, yeah, everyone's living a pretty crazy, you know, when you look at somebody's life, it's a crazy story, you mm. know what I mean? Whether they can communicate that story to you, that's a different, that's yeah. a whole nother different game. But, like, um, the, yeah, the fact of the matter is, like, everyone's living their own story. And, like, you know, if you, you could make a movie about anybody, if you, if you communicate it in the right way, it'd be amazing, you know what I mean? Whether it's just, a damn sad story or extremely, you know, rags to riches or just riches to riches or rags to rags, you know what I mean? Like, it's a story that we all we, we all, all can kind of identify with the human experience, you know what I mean? Like, there's something in everybody's lives where, like, they've experienced, like, a point that we can identify with. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's just about kind of, like, connecting over those things that we share rather than, like, figuring out why we're different, you know what I mean? Like, 
yeah, we're all different and everything like that, but we're all humans at the end of the day, you know, like whether you're whether you're rich or you're poor, hey, whether you're black or you're white. Bro, like look at us. Like you did you be were you did you choose the colour of your skin when you were born? No. Mm -hmm. So how can I hate on you for that? You know, you had no choice. And the same thing for you. And uh same thing for me, you know what I mean? And that's what probably why I felt it so man, like when I was growing up, like why I was so hurt or like I got so pissed off or whatever you want to call it when people call me white boy. I said, bro, I didn't I didn't ask for that, bro. What you gonna chuck it back in my face? What did I do to you? You know? I, okay, you feel like, you know, the white people that you know don't treat you fairly. I'm not them. I didn't do nothing to you. Like I say I'm from King I went to King's College. I'm I'm back at King's College, you know what I mean? As a teacher and a stu and a, um sorry, as a tutor and a mentor. Um, I'm obviously not an academic teacher. Mm -hmm. Um but I work with the boys a little bit and I would love to do more work in, in the local community and stuff like that. Um, and that's something that once this fight is done, like that's that's big for me next year, you know what I mean? Like I, wa I wanna talk to these bucket boys and I wanna talk to Richie Hardcore down the road, you know, and I wanna, I wanna make something happen in that community, you know, on the 275, like in Mangere East. And I wanna make something like for those guys, you know, whether it be at OC or whether it be at St. Paul's or wh wh wherever I can, um, kind of share what I've got out of my life with people that I think it could benefit with them. Mm -hmm. And and rather than do it from a focus, rather than walk into a community and have people judge me based on um, on my different, what, how I'm different from them, I wanted them to look at me like, like I do. I, I look at other people and think, man, like you're just like me. You just painted a different color and you just got a different head start. You know, like when people say to me, oh, like, you know, like oh, oh, okay, King's boy, you know? Or when they say that about my students, I say, bro, these kids ain't got no head start, bro. You you learn some lessons, you come from a tough home, you learn some lessons in that home that these boys will never learn. And if, if these boys want to learn it, they're going to learn it the hard way. Like you did when you were six or whatever, they're going to learn that when they're 32, when they make a mistake and they tank a business or, or whatever. And then, and then what? Then, then what's your point of division? Then why, why, what, what are you gonna call them out for now? You're gonna hate on them what because, oh, they had it all, and then they couldn't make more out of it, you know? And now, oh, now they're not good enough at being rich for you, you know? Or and all that kind of stuff. It's like, well, people, or or the opposite is true. Don't get me wrong, you know. Like I'm out, I'm here, and uh, you know, I know, I, I know a lot of people that got a lot of money. And don't like people from Odahu or don't like people from Mangere, you know? And they look at them like, oh, okay, hey, lock your doors. Hey, why yeah. do you think they want to lock, why have you got to lock your doors around them? Mm -hmm. They want to steal from you because you, they know that you don't like them. They they look at you uh, in this way that they want to take from you or you want to take from them because you guys are divided. You can't see that you guys are actually the same people and there's actually enough to go around. You know, you're driving a nice Lamborghini or whatever, you lock the door. Hey, bro, they're not stealing from their neighbors. Their neighbors got money that they can steal, but they don't hate their neighbors. They love each other, you know, they're, they're in it together. They see the unity, but um, they see the unity. They got their sense of community. Bro, this is one big community, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We don't need to chop it up and slice it up. That's, that's how they control us, you know. That's how they. That's how we get beat each other down, you know. That's why we all bloody fight wars and all this kind of stuff because we only see division. We don't see each other like, yo, that guy's just like me, you know. And that's why Gary Vee and stuff like that. Hey, mm. no matter where you come from, you can build it. So enough with the bullshit, bro. Like enough, like with the excuses. Oh man, my dad didn't do this. Oh, my dad wasn't around. You know. Oh, you coming from a rich family, man? This man. These boys don't have no head start. Like, there's some kids at King's College. They don't have... Yeah, they're at King's College. And yeah, their parents have got big businesses. They don't have no head start, bro. They don't have no head start on none of yours. You know, and you shouldn't look at them like they do. Mm. And the same thing with the boys at Mangere College I and, and Odahu College. I don't drive past that school. and I don't drive past those communities and stuff like that. Like, oh, man, sucks to be them. Nah, bro. I just drive past them. I'm like, man... Whatever they don't have, financially, whatever, they make up for it in so many other ways. They're blessed in so many other ways, you know? And it's it's hard for me to see it. And and uh, and sometimes in places like that, 
they believe the stories that the media tells them. Oh, mm. we're no good. You know, we're not. We're, we're. You know, they believe those narratives about themselves, and it limits them. You know, the same thing with like, you know, some of my students. Oh, so you know, you think I could be a fighter, bro? If you want to be a fighter, be a fighter. What? Can do whatever you want. Yeah, because you came from a nice home. You can't be, you can't be mm. a hard worker. That's mm. all you need. You just have to be a hard worker, you know? So Don't let crazy. society put this uh, limitations yeah, on you. Yeah, And that's what, like, man, I feel like uh, those guys like out there like doing it like Gary Vee and stuff like that, that's the real message. It's like, yeah, man. there's no excuse, man. Like, what, like, whatever you want, just go and get it. You know what I mean? Like, there's just no excuse, you know? And that's not to say that the universe is going to line up for you. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm not saying that luck doesn't exist and... And it might be harder for you than the other person. You might experience a little bit more pain on the way, but just be grateful for it. You know what I mean? Like if you're living and breathing, you're still like above above the ground. You know what I mean? And just be grateful. You know, just one more day. You know, you got to embrace the um, the process. 100%. You know what it might be. You know, like yeah, not everybody is gonna have the same path. Mm. You know, mm. but you. I think the other one is you know someone who goes through like bigger tests, mm. bigger hardships, you'd come out of it, you know, much better than exactly. someone who had the easy route. So what's the benefit of the privilege, right? Yeah. If, you, if you're privileged and you look at someone with a lot of privilege and you say, oh man, love to be like them. Well, why? Let's say you take someone, you take some real great men, you know? What, what drove them there? The hardship. Mm. So how do you get there without the hardship? then why would you want to be privileged? And then you realize, okay, so if you are privileged, what do you need to do? Seek out hardship. That's pretty easy to do. So anyone can do it. And it's game over now. You know what I mean? Like, it's just crazy. So how come when people say, oh, man, I, oh, it is easier for some people, though. You say, well, it wasn't easier for that guy. He had the hardest road ever. Mm. So if he can do it, why can't you do it? Ah, not everyone's built like that. Hey, uh, everyone's built with two arms. Okay, within reason. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Within reason, you mm. know what I mean? Mm. Obviously, you know? Mm. If you've got no bloody head on this, on your shoulders, then yeah, you're not going to get far. But like, within reason, you're a human being, you're kicking and breathing and something, you can do something pretty pretty powerful, you know what mm. I mean? And if you don't want to, I'm not going to come and hate on you. Yeah. Just it's it's up, come completely up, and, up yeah, to you. Just you don't sit do, around yeah. saying it's someone else's fault. You yeah. know? Just don't point your finger at me or point your finger at my boys or like my friends and my family or the government or whoever. Mm -hmm. Just be honest, you know what I mean? People like to, once uh, things don't add up to the way they want it to, you start to point fingers and like, yeah. ah, it's because of this, because of that. Oh, yeah, write a big bloody story about yeah. it. Hey, <laughs> keep your story, live your story. You yeah, know man. I mean? Hey, write a good story with your actions, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? You write some big bloody sob story for me. Yeah. <laughs> I've got enough of those, hey, plenty of bloody <laughs> emotional movies out there, hey, you know? So yeah, it's, definitely. It's one of those ones, bro. Um, so, John, uh, what is your... Um, well, I don't want to look past your next mm -hmm. opponent, but sure. one of the things that I want to ask, like, uh, how do you, s what are your future plans, to put it that way? In, in fighting or just in my in my life kind of thing? Oh, man, we can go both. <laughs> we'll go bigger. Yeah. So, in, um, yeah, my career is, I guess my career is just part of my life, you know what I mean? So, like, for me, is um, yeah, like I was saying earlier, you know, like more money, more purpose, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? So, from, on the career front, like, I just want to be like the best version of me that I possibly can. And so that just means like doing my best every day, you know what I mean? And um, and having faith in everyone around me, my management, my coaches, you know, my teammates and all my supporting, uh, my supporters, my man, like sponsors, help me out, physios and everything like that. Listen, like if you sponsor me, you're never going to get your money back, bro. You know what I mean? <laughs> okay, well, maybe one day, but at right now, Right now, you're not getting your money back if you sponsor me. And so, like, I'm just so grateful and stuff like that. Um, what I would like to do is reach a point where people who have support me actually get the return on the investment that they deserve, you know? And, and they will. Then, yeah, they will, man. Like, the guys who put their time into me, they're going to get that. That's an investment in time, and they'll, they'll get it back, you know what I mean? And I, I do what I can now, um, and I want to do more every day. So, as closer I get to... Um, you know, some of those goals that I have kind of on like on an egocentric level, you know, whether it's having the belt or like, you know, but being able to buy a pair of sneakers, not sweat it, you know, maybe like buy a pair for my boys as well and that kind of stuff. Yeah, that's that's in my head always, you know, but just um, 
I want to keep that level. And then in my life, man, I just want to be able to just like, it's just focus on what I can control and uh, make the people that I really care about is I want to make the, do my part to uh, kind of make their lives as, just have a, a, mm. a bit, the best impact I can on their lives, you know what mm. I mean? Like, and, and most of the time I think that that, that the key for that is just helping them to kind of realize what they, what, what it is that they want to achieve and yeah, help them, help them on their journey, just like they helped me on my journey. Just kind of mm. like share, share the love a little bit, you know what I mean? Like we can have two cups, you know, we each got our own little cup. We can just share a little bit, you know what I mean? Like, you know, we don't have to like, I don't want to take more than I give, you know mm. what I mean? I want to find that sense of balance in my life. And that's, that's all I'm really um, focused on at the moment. You know, no, I don't look too far ahead. I think that everything will take care of itself. Eh? Mm. Hey you, don't forget to subscribe, like and share this video. Wise words from the wise man, oh, which is okay. what I David like uh, David Neath. Uh, I like that. Well, idea. Junior started and then David made it, David Neath made it official. Um, so yeah, yeah what would you now. Yeah, it is. It's it's like an ongoing competition yeah, yeah. that we have now. So um what would be um an advice that you would give to people watching and listening? I mean, it doesn't have to be like... It doesn't have to be original, eh? Well, it can be anything, bro. Okay. It can be anything. Yeah, so like I was saying earlier, I'm big into stoicism. Mm. And, uh, you know, guys, if you... Book recommendation real quick. Meditations by Marcus Aurelius, great emperor of um, Rome back in the day. Basically, like a real, like, a soldier's em emperor. You know what I mean? These guys were real, real motherfuckers. You know what I mean? Like, they led their armies in the front and they were the emperor you know and they're in there like fighting fighting serious wars and stuff like that and uh marcus aurelius used to write in his journal the meditations from from obviously it's like times where he would reflect on his day and everything daily practice and this is what stoicism is all about but there's one uh that i might butcher a little bit but the quote basically is like don't waste time thinking about how to be a better man be one and it's that, like, don't think about how you can go and be a better husband. Go and kiss your wife when she gets home with a smile on your face. You know what I mean? Like, don't think about how you can be a better son. Like, this is very relevant for me, obviously, you know. I don't have too many ladies in my life, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, um, man, go and, like, tell your mom you love it. You know what I mean? Like, when you finish training with your coaches, thank them you know what i mean like take a little bit of time like don't think that waiting two minutes for them to finish a conversation is going to make you late to have a com to have a coffee with somebody who don't care about you you know that person you're rushing off to you even care about him does he care about you you know what i mean like i lost some people in my life like um that and i'm sure a lot of people like this you know i do anything to spend more time with them right and uh, when I think about the times that I saw them and they wanted to spend some time with me and I rushed off because I had something to do, can't even remember where I was going, you know? You think about, you know, rushing off on someone that you care about and you thought you didn't have time for and then you lose them and then you think like, wow, what did I sacrifice that time for? Nothing. Can't remember any of it. Can't remember who I was going to go see. That person I was going to go see, I, I should have been late for that guy. Now, I'm not saying be late to every meeting. <laughs> I'm not saying lie to people and schedule things and blow yeah. them off. <laughs> but I'm saying prioritize and just, like, act on it. Like, you want to be a better person? Be one. Don't think about it, you know. You want to make a podcast? Start it. And keep doing it. And that's how you get good. You want to be a fighter? Be one, bro. You know what I mean? That's all I'm trying to do every day, you know. There's lots of times where I wake up and I think, hey, are you overtraining? You know what I mean? Mm. Uh, hey, um, maybe you should do this today. Hey, maybe you should do that. Hey, maybe it would be good for your mental health to take a day off. Hey, show up at the gym at 10. It's easy. You yeah. Know? It's like, it's that, it's, it's that simple for me, you know? Yeah. Oh, That's man. my little... Uh, Words of wisdom. Yeah, man. That was awesome. <laughs> None of them my own, of course. You know, right, that, that, I mean, you 
it doesn't have to be obviously like you, you know the, you put things together and mm. you you know you make it your own yeah, thing you yeah, know yeah. Which, which is awesome bro like no no one has like, gone along these lines yet oh you know? sure. that was pretty interesting yeah. the first one so that's awesome okay cool. <laughs> and, and uh, um keep your hands up and your chin down you know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey that's the that's the best words the, you can get uh, in yeah, this game the, stay on top okay hey, sorry bro <laughs> yeah that that's very important one definitely yeah, yeah. Do, definitely do yeah, that yeah. And put your hands down yeah. and don't look up. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> oh man. Um, so I think uh, pretty much we man we we close we to, we close it to yeah man we close to almost awesome bro. I really enjoyed um this podcast we did today. Okay. Um, before we go, John, um, I just want to give repeat again some of the stuff. Sure. So those who want to watch your fights will be <laughs> on the fifth of November yeah. in New Zealand time will be 5th of November yeah on the Friday morning Friday morning yeah. and go to brave cf dot tv and uh, do the subscription mm. and it's I free guess, you yeah, gotta get an email but like that's free, free still you know? free you don't have yeah. to pay no money yeah. right so don't complain about having to pay now if they charge you <laughs> hey different story don't, <laughs> if they charge you don't watch it I don't care. Yeah. you know <laughs> yeah but um it is free so people can watch it over there i'll put the links on the video as cool. well and um so your sh- your socials bro where can uh people follow you on your instagram it will yeah, be yeah yeah mainly instagram is trouble underscore bruin or yep. if you just go if you instagram like if you just search in john john bruin, john bruin it mm. works you know bruin i'll put the links in your bruin like brewing beer without the G, because like, yeah. I'm not can't get G, it can't get that wrong. I mean? like, yeah, <laughs> take the G out of the area because I'm a white boy. You know? so, <laughs> I'll put the those. links on your socials on there as well. So, mm. um, guys, do follow John, follow your journey, man. I'm so excited to see your your next fight, bro. I'm definitely gonna be tuning into that one. Okay. It doesn't matter if I have to pay. I'm definitely gonna yeah, tune. I'll you have cheap, you, know? you, you <laughs> <laughs> you've you've earned uh, one uh, very loyal uh, um. A fan today, yeah, bro. Yeah, I'm gonna likewise, say, yeah, likewise, man, bro. and I'm uh, gonna watch your journey. I'm really excited to see, um, you know, just the progression, you know, and like after this fight, you know, I'm, I want to see you, you know, achieve, smash, big stuff, bro. Yeah, get to you, that, bro. get that, you know. I want to see you get to the top of the game at mm-hmm. Brave, and then maybe after Brave, hopefully to the UFC and do your thing over there. And I'm sure you're gonna be making waves, and um, you know people are gonna know who John Bruin is oh, so. in time to yeah. come, man. I hope and they benefit from it, you know. Def- definitely, yeah. I th- man. I think bro, a lot of people's gonna be, uh, they either gonna you know, be motivated mm-hmm. from the podcast that you did today, or they'll pick up a thing or two that they cool. can learn, man. Cool. Definitely, bro. I think they are, and even for myself, like I've learned a lot from you today, and I picked up quite a few things myself. Awesome. So even if it's one person who's benefited, hey, hey me too, I benefited, man. I had a great man. day today, man. That's yeah. fun. So, yeah. um, so anyway, thank you very much for your uh, time coming on the podcast and doing awesome. this with us, How man. You appreciate it, brother. Cheers, brother. All right, easy. <laughs> All right that's us. See you, man, on the next one. Thank you for watching this episode. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share, and see you on the next one.